so we've got this example. Um, the only difference in this kind of question is that sometimes the diagram won't be provided. All the things that you've been doing in the previous questions look like this, where they've given you the diagram. The difference now is there's going to be a couple of worded examples where you'll either need to draw a diagram or you'll need to add forces onto the diagram to make it a complete one that you've got. Okay? So it says here a particle P of mass 2 kilograms is moving on a smooth slope and is being acted on by a force of 4 newtons <coughs> that acts parallel to the slope as shown. So obviously the 4 newtons is pushing it, and again it says parallel in this kind of way here, and it says it's moving, um, actually it doesn't say which way it's moving, but it shows you in the diagram that the 4 is going up the slope. If it said that it was the 4 newtons was acting horizontal, what would be different about the blue arrow that we've got here? No, if it was horizontal, what might it look like? Morning. Morning. Yep, I can see lots of people going like this with their arm. If, it was, they, if they described it as horizontal, it would be like that, and you would recognise that the angle would be equal because of alternate angles. Obviously, they're not saying that, though. They're just saying it um, is parallel. It says the slope is inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal, where tan alpha equals 3 over 4. And when tan alpha is equal to 3 over 4, the temptation is probably to say, oh, well, I need to find out what the angle is, so I'm going to do the inverse tan of 3 over 4, and then I know what the, the angle is. That's the temptation, but that is not what we do for these questions when they tell us what tan alpha is. And you'll see what I've put here inside this hint box that we've got. And I've said, do not find alpha explicitly. Don't find out what alpha is. Because at no point in the question do we actually need to use alpha. What do we use during the question to do with alpha when we resolve forces? We use sine alpha and we use cos alpha. So I don't need to find out what alpha is. I need to find out what sine alpha is and what cos alpha is. So it says here, uh, we can find cos alpha and sine alpha by forming a suitable triangle such that tan alpha is 3 quarters. So you draw a triangle. I guess my normal way of drawing them would be this way around. I don't know why I put it in reverse there, but whatever. And we know with um, tan, it's the opposite over the adjacent. So the 3 will be the opposite and the 4 will be the adjacent. And then the hypotenuse is five. is 5. So from that information that we've got there, we can establish that cos alpha is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is 4 over 5. And sine alpha is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 3 over 5. And if you want to, you could use it as 0 0.8 and 0 0.6. Depending on the context of the question, you'll either want to do it in decimals or in fractions, whichever looks like the easiest. So this then means you never need to find out what alpha is. You can just use sine alpha and you can use cos alpha. Mistakes I've seen people use, uh, make in the past for this is they will, during the question, when it says sine alpha, they will then do the sine of 3 over 5, which is obviously not right because it's telling you that the whole thing is 3 over 5, not that alpha is 3 over 5. So you'll see how we use that in the question. We don't do this kind of thing. Instead, we will use the fact that sine alpha is 3 over 5 and cos alpha is 4 over 5. And you've got to draw that triangle to be able to come up with those things. It's a little visual tool that will help you do that. OK, so now we've got to this stage here. We've got the diagram that's been drawn for us, but it doesn't have all of the forces that are on there. So Ronak, are there any forces that you can tell me that I should add to this? Good, we should add the weight, which would be uh, 2G. 2G. And anything else? Uh, I guess it would dissolve the Manhattan as well. Yeah, it could do, but there's some other forces that are still missing, Ekram. Our normal contact. Yeah, the normal contact force, our normal reaction, which is obviously normal to the slope, hence it being drawn like that. Um, you did just tell me, though, that this force can be split up into the two resolved forces. Make sure that those two I've drawn in red are perpendicular to each other, OK? Um, and this angle at the top here is alpha. So this one running along here, Tambe, what would this force running along here be? Um, yeah, 2G. You just forgot the D. It would be 2G cos alpha because it's adjacent. So that one would be 2G sine alpha, OK? And we've got the four newtons that's coming like that. I would probably still want to draw another diagram at this stage. So I've got forces coming up from the plane are R. What forces do I have that are acting up the plane? What forces do I have that are acting up the plane? We have four going along like this. Down, I have 2G cos alpha. And left, I have 2G sine alpha. Um, so... 
first of all, we haven't been asked to even find out what R is, but clearly we can see that R would be equal to 2G cos alpha because it's not moving in that direction at all. It's moving in this sort of direction here. And which of those things do you think is bigger, 2G sine alpha or 4? 2G sine alpha is going to be bigger because G is obviously close to 10, so you've got like 20 times by something and 4. The mistake is, I think I've put on the diagram, the acceleration is in that direction, but actually the acceleration is going to be in that direction because the 2G sine alpha is bigger than the 4, which means it's going to be moving in that direction. So all we're going to do is we're going to do F equals MA, <coughs> and I always like to say which direction we're resolving it in. So we're doing it going down the slope is the direction we think it's going to go in. So we will have 2 2g sine alpha minus 4, that's the resultant force, equals the mass, which is 2, times the acceleration. This line here is where you get all of the marks, or nearly all of the marks, okay? So I would not substitute in sine alpha until I've written out that first line, because imagine that you got this thing wrong, you would then get this thing wrong whereas you would get all the method marks for just using that it was sine alpha here. So take that extra like 10 seconds, five seconds, just to write that line out in detail before substituting in. <coughs> so now I've done that, I'm just gonna solve the equation because that's just two G times sine alpha, which is three over five minus four. And then that whole thing is just gonna divide by two to find out what the acceleration is. So if we put that in our calculators, we should come up with 3.88. Is that um, rounded? It's just, great, so you just get 3.88 meters per second, and we can see that this is down the slope. So even though someone was trying to push it up the slope with four <coughs> newtons, the weight of it was too much, and they, they could only slow it down. It still was gonna be moving down the slope, but they couldn't quite, uh, they couldn't quite resist the motion there. We didn't need to put any resistance forces on the slope in this case. Why was there no resistance forces on the slope? Yeah, because we've modelled it as being smooth. So if they said, what, well, you know, what could you do to improve this model? You could say, we could add in friction, because it's not very realistic that something would be smooth. There's always going to be friction, even on things that we consider as being smooth. So we're just going to do one more example on the next page, and then you can do a bit of practice for me. So I can put it back on this page in a second if you want me to, but I figured we'll just get these two examples done, and then, and then we'll do practice. So this one's different because we've got no diagram that's been drawn here, so we need to think about what the diagram is. It says a particle of mass m, I should say m kilograms, I suppose, is pushed up a smooth slope inclined at 30 degrees by a force of magnitude 5g newtons acting at an angle of 60 degrees to the slope, causing the particle to accelerate up the slope. So we know it's going up the slope at 0.5 metres per second squared. Show that the mass of the particle is 5g over 1 plus g, kilograms. So first thing I want to say is because you notice that G is in the in the answer, at no point in this question should you use 9.8. You should leave everything as G because the answer wants it to be in terms of G. So you should never substitute in 9.8 if it's asking you to do this. A little thing about drawing your own diagrams, do not draw your diagrams like this. Do not draw your diagrams like this. Make your slope always sort of somewhere in between, roughly at about 40 degrees. Usually this kind of slope is like the right amount of slopiness that you have. You don't want it to be too shallow and you don't want it to be too steep just because it means fitting all of your forces in becomes trickier. No matter what the angle is that they tell you, always just do it in this kind of setup and it will just be easier to get your forces on. So I don't want to see people when we do them on the board doing these kind of slopes that look like this because it's just going to be too hard to get your forces on nicely. Okay, so I've got this smooth slope where it's got 30 degrees and I've got a particle of mass m. So I want to just put a particle that's on here. As soon as I put that on, I want to put that it's got its <coughs> mg and that it's got its normal reaction. And it says it's being... Um, pushed by a, a force of 5g acting at an angle of 60 degrees to the slope. Now there's actually two different ways that this force could be, could be drawn here. Can, can anybody describe what they think one of the ways, or, or both of the ways of this 5g being at 60 degrees, 60 degrees to the slope? Yeah, what do you think, Ms. Keir? So you could have one of the ways could be like this, kind of pointing down into the slope, 5g 
and 60 degrees. Can you think of another way that this, the wording of this means it could be, Rehan? The other side. The other side. It, it could be the other side and going kind of like, it still could be going upwards. It could actually be going like this with 5G and 60 degrees. Both of those seem to represent the same kind of thing there. And actually, neither of these things will affect the acceleration. Let's just quickly think about that for, for why that might be true. This 5G force can be split into this force and this force. This 5G force can be split into this force and this force. What can you tell me about these two arrows? They're both equal. They're both 5G cos 60. So it's not going to affect the acceleration. What would be affected if it was either this force or this force? What would, what would change? The angles would be the same, but the value of R. The value of R would be different, because in this one, you've got a force that's pushing into the slope, which would make the value of R bigger or smaller? No, it would actually make the value of R bigger, because it's making more pushing into the slope. It's like if you push down on your chair, you feel like the reaction from the chair being more. And this value of R would make it smaller. But because this question is not asking us anything about R at all, it doesn't matter whether we think it's going in like this or whether we think it's going up like that. Someone in the other class asked me, well, what, you know, what would we do if they did ask us to find out R? They would actually have drawn a diagram for you already, so you wouldn't need to worry about that at all. Okay? So it doesn't matter which one we do. I'm just going to go with this one that we've got here. And we've already said that we can split that into this force and this force here. The size of this one that I've got here, Anika, what's this force here? 5G sine 60, obviously meaning this one is our 5G cos 60. We've got a rather busy looking diagram, so I'll draw a second diagram that we've got over here. I think that's all of my forces. We've got R going up, 5G cos 60. That's not all of my forces, is it? I haven't resolved this one. I need to resolve my mg into two different forces. So this would be my mg cos 30 and my mg sine 30, because this is opposite the 30 degrees that we've got there. So adding those in, I have my mg cos 30, and I also have my 5g sine 60. And then to the left here, I've got my mg sine 30. I'm not really bothered about these up and down ones, because it's not asking me to do anything about the normal reaction. It's just asking us something about the acceleration. So all I'm going to do is I will do f equals ma. And they're telling us it's going up the slope, so I'm going to resolve it in that direction, which it's moving in. So it'll be the resultant force is 5g cos 60 minus mg sine 30. That's the resultant force, which equals the mass times the acceleration. And the acceleration in the question is 0.5. And can anybody tell me what the value of cos 60 is? A half and the value of sine 30? A half. So luckily, we're not getting any of the root 3 over 2s in any of this. So that's 5g times a half. 5 times a half, 2.5. mg times a half, 0.5. mg equals 0.5m. You don't want to substitute in g because of what we said earlier on. g is in the answer. Um, they don't seem to have any decimals in there, so I kind of want to do something to this equation. I probably would double everything. So I get 5g minus mg equals m. Last stage that needs to be done, or final stages that need to be done. Rearrange. So I get 5g equals m plus mg. So 5g equals m. Factorize this side, 1 plus g. So you get m equals 5g over 1 plus g. And the units of that is kilograms. OK, so it's just I like this example because it explores a few different things. How at the beginning we said it had like an ambiguous diagram, um, ambiguous meaning we didn't know which way it would be. But actually, it doesn't it doesn't affect the result at all. The only thing it would have affected the result of would be the value of the normal reaction. If they didn't give you a diagram for this in the question, they might say something like the force could have been drawn in a different way. How would this affect the value of R? So that's why I want to kind of start exploring what some of these ideas are like. Right, so what we're going to do for, I don't know, maybe about 20 minutes is you've got in your booklets on the back page, you've got um, eight questions here. I think we should start off just doing the even, uh, the, sorry, the odd questions. So do one, three, five, seven. Um, 
and then you can come back and do the even ones. The reason I want you to do that is to get to some of the trickier questions a little bit faster. Does anybody want me to leave it on one of the pages to finish writing anything up? So, yes. Yep. Yeah. Why isn't it acting as in downwards like that? Why isn't what acting downwards, sorry? You see the force is acting towards the slope. Yes. Why? Why isn't it on on this side of the slope? Like, like coming like this? No, no, no. On on the same side. You know how we did it pointing upwards. Yep. Was, why wouldn't it come down? I don't understand. Do you want to come and draw it on? Why isn't it like this? Because the question says that it is accelerating up the slope. Okay. And if you think of that scenario, there's no way that that box is moving up the slope. Yeah? Good question. So I guess I should have said this was happening, that it was moving up the slope at 0.5. Yeah? Do you want me to leave it?